Welcome back to the shop today. We are going to be working on our 2019 L5P. We are going to be installing a Whirly Custom Fab three and a half inch passenger side intercooler pipe. So hopefully it's not too difficult. Never done it before, but let's get into it and show you how it's done. Okay, so we do have a happy workbench full of all kinds of uh, WC Fab goodies. This is the one we're going to be working on today. So not going to be talking about any of this other stuff right now, but let's get into this piece. Okay, so this is what you get in the kit when you buy the passenger side intercooler pipe. I know you guys have seen in the previous video, I did opt for an illusion purple color. And man, it's uh, really nice looking. Um, you do get a really nice high quality silicone boot. You can see all the reinforcements in there, so that's nice. Uh, now this is a reduced boot, so this does go from, uh, not sure the size, probably three and a half inch to three inch. And they do give you different size, uh, really nice stainless T-bolt clamp for that. So that way um, you're not trying to use a one size fits all and you got a bunch of extra hanging out on top. So they give you this bigger one for the bottom, a smaller one for the top. So that's definitely nice. Okay, let's go over some tools that I think you're gonna need. I have a uh, multiple 3 8 extensions here. Not sure if I'm gonna need anything that long. Uh, you can use hand tools. You can use a uh, 3 8 ratchet. Uh, to take the inner fender out on uh, my truck, it is a 2019. Uh, it is a T15 Torx head. Uh, you will need a 14 millimeter wrench. Um, now I have a deep well and a short of all of these. I'm not sure if you'll need them, but I have a 13 millimeter, 11 millimeter, and a 10 millimeter. I do have a Milwaukee uh, 3 8 inch uh, right angle and then a Milwaukee handheld there to help me zip some screws out quicker. Okay, we're gonna take our T15 uh, Torx head there. Now there's a ton of these uh, T15 screws. I don't know how many of them there is. There's probably 40 of the things, so I'm not gonna bore you. <laughs> So 40 screws is a bit of an exaggeration, but there's a bunch, there's probably at least 20. Okay, this is what it looks like inside with your inner fender liner removed. So you have tons of access. Um, now the pipe we're actually gonna be replacing is this pipe right here. Um, it does recommend uh, from the manufacturer to take your tire off, but I have quite a bit of room here. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. Okay, next you're gonna remove your factory air box setup. Uh, I didn't film that here. For me, it's just a, a band clamp there. Move your mass airflow sensor, and then four 10 millimeter bolts uh, right here. One, two, three, four, that take the air box out. So what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to remove the um, this bracket uh, for the air box. And the way you do that is you have 10, 10 millimeter here, here, and then, uh, there's some more 10 millimeters right there. And, and I'm standing on top of the engine, basically looking down. Um, there's three of them. So you have one here, two, three. The middle one has to come all the way out. These, you just have to back out probably a quarter of an inch. and allows that bracket to, to slot. And I might film that one from the bottom. So let me show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is take our 10 millimeter. I'm gonna zip these out. And they shouldn't be very tight. And you want to take those out. And I did have a magnetic screw tray with the rest of my hardware. So you just pop these out. Let me show you how to get the ones on the bottom. Okay, so now that we've got the 10 millimeter bolts out up top of the box, we're going to back these out. Um, well, I could if I had a longer extension. Take two. Now the bottom ones, you just have to... that because they're slotted. The middle one you gotta take all the way out. Put that in your magnetic tray and back the top one out as well. Should be all we need. And we should be able to uh, lift this box up and out. Oh, you know what, one thing I did see there. Not sure if you can see that. There's a Christmas tree 
attaches this box, so you'll have to get a pry tool in there like that and remove your Christmas tree from your lines. Like it, so I just took a pry tool like this, got right up underneath there, pried it out, disconnected it. Now we should be able to lift this box here. Up. I might have to get it from the top. Battery box tray, or uh, not battery box tray, air box tray removed. Okay, I hope this angle, uh, it's a little bit difficult to film. We're gonna remove this intake charge air uh, sensor. Now, it is hooked into a bracket here on the actual pipe itself. So let me use my pry tool. Get that loose. See if I can get that in here. Okay, so there's a button, sorry. There's a button here you're gonna depress and push it. Should push it straight down, I think. Yeah, should just push it straight down. There you go. That disconnects. I'm gonna just slide this out of the way for now. Now, the other end of this, if I can get that on camera. Well, it's right there. It's where your 14 millimeter uh, wrench comes into play. So we're gonna Oh, that was really, really loose. So there's your sensor removed. Okay, next I'm gonna remove this 13 millimeter bolt here. Uh, there's actually uh, a couple more 10 millimeter bolts back here. Once we get this off, this whole bracket will actually come out. Such a bolt looks like. Okay, so I'm not sure how clear this is on video here. Um, but this is a locking ring that actually locks the upper tube into your Y bridge there. Um, they say you turn it clockwise, and I'm assuming just in one of those notches. I'll turn it a little bit. sure how much it's supposed to turn um that might have disconnected it yeah i think that disconnected it but now we need to do the hard part at the bottom i'm not sure how clear this is going to come out so are these these little sorry Camera did. Okay, so there's these little retainer clips right here. Sorry, the camera won't focus. Um, you have to kind of pry these outward in the lock position. Um, I'm gonna fiddle around with it, and then once I get it out, I'll show you guys exactly what I did. Okay, we have our uh, clips from uh, hell there undone and it wasn't too bad uh, three hands would would have been optimal and there's your factory passenger side intercooler pipe out okay so now that we have this factory piece out on the workbench um, you can see there's lots of advantages to the whirly piece so potential for a boost leak potential for a boost leak 
weird locking design. Um, now here's the part that was giving me some trouble. So essentially you have these uh, little retainers here that lock into this black plastic piece. You pull them out and they lock open like that. Whoop. See how I pulled the other side and it snapped back in? It's the same thing it was doing in the truck. So these are supposed to lock open. I was having a really hard time getting them to actually lock. Just like I am right now. And then they snap closed on in. It was a big pain in the butt. Okay, so you want to pay special attention to this orientation of this snap ring here. I'm going to call it a snap ring anyways. You need to make sure that your new one on your whirly pipe goes in the exact same way. Because that's important. It won't lock if you don't do that. You have to take this black retainer off here. You can actually slide them outward towards you. That black piece comes off. And we're gonna reuse that. The arrow portion faces rearward. So it's gonna face the back of your pipe like that. I misspoke. You do not need this piece. Keep it though, don't get rid of it. If your snap ring goes on just like that. So I did install one O-ring already. Um, it is a two O-ring design. Now they do recommend that you take a uh, non-petroleum based uh, lubricant and put on your seal there, your O-ring. You're gonna work it into place. It's kinda hard to do here on camera. It's actually really simple. You just work it into place. And then once you have it in place, you're ready to put your pipe back on. So that's what it looks like with the O-rings fully installed. It's a double O-ring design. It fits, uh, it fits perfect. I mean, it's machined beautifully. Okay, next I'm gonna install my charge air sensor. Um, now I did go ahead and clean mine off. It had a little bit of gunk on it, so you're just gonna wanna make sure that it's clean. And they do recommend for a the best uh, leak-free uh, fitment to use some type of sealant. Um, not sure if this is exactly what's recommended, but it is safe for all, it's high, high temperature, high pressure, and it is safe for all uh, metal, rubber, and plastic components. So I'm just gonna put a tiny dab of that stuff on there. Not a lot, just a tiny dab. I'm gonna make sure, wanna make sure that none of it is on the actual probe itself because that's what measures the temperature. Just gonna wanna make sure you get a little on there, make sure that you're clean there. And we'll just thread it in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure too that you're not holding this stationary while you're twisting this because it'll twist your wires all up. So turn it all together as a unit. Thread it right in. You don't wanna crank the hell out of this. Just get it nice and snug there. I have no idea if this will be helpful or not, but to keep this from flopping all around, I'm just gonna Put a piece of tape on it now i did go back and rebubble wrap this after i showed it to you guys just to you know keep it from getting scratched up but i'll let you guys know if that helps or hurts i almost forgot to show you the removal of this bracket here i was able to get the top one out with a uh ratcheting wrench or a uh a handheld but this last one i had to get with a 10 millimeter um wrench so you just two 10 millimeter bolts to take that out Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do on top here is we're going to install our WC Fab silicone boot. Um, now the larger end is gonna face towards the bottom and it's gonna attach to your pipe. The smaller end is actually gonna attach right here. Now you're gonna wanna make sure um, you use the smaller T-bolt clamp and have it facing in a good orientation for you there. This is your 11 millimeter. So we'll slide this on from the bottom.
and make sure you get it all the way up and then you can adjust your uh, clamp there. Okay, once your clamp's on, you kind of want to leave everything loose and then we'll work on putting the intercooler pipe uh, up from the bottom. Okay, now we're going to take the whirly pipe and be careful not to damage your charge air sensor there. Okay, I did move my uh, passenger tire. I did turn the wheel towards the passenger side. Gave me a little bit more room. Um, like I said, I am on a lift kit, so I didn't need to take the wheel all the way off. And I did get this on. If it'll focus there. Uh, that little clip there, the one we talked about, is a pain in the uh, pain in the butt to get that thing on. But I did get it on, and. Merc. Um, did get the boot on top up here. That uh, slid right in. I didn't have any fitment issues. Now all these clamps are loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. We'll get the bubble wrap off. We'll get this stuff back on. And hopefully that should be it. One more thing I wanted to mention is there's a, um, you can feel right here you can feel that lip, that uh, positive bump out on the actual piping itself. You wanna make sure that you're not above that positive bump out. So as long as you get your clamp on, make sure you're on all the way around too. snug everything nice and tight and let's take this bubble wrap off Okay, so with all the bubble wrap removed, let's get back up, up top. I'm all set upstairs and uh, let's reattach our charger sensor. Okay, we are gonna reconnect our oops, charge air sensor there. Make sure it locks. Now, we did used to have a uh, bracket here that we hooked this into. We don't have that anymore. So I am going to take a zip tie and just zip tie it out of the way okay so now that we have our t-bolt clamps tight our 11 millimeters are good our 14 millimeter there is tight we have our uh, pigtail zip tied out of the way. That's what your fully installed passenger side, three and a half inch Whirly Custom Fab intercooler pipe looks like. It wasn't that bad. So all you have to do is uh, take a microfiber rag, wipe down any fingerprints that you might have, and you're good to go. Put your airbox back in and you're ready to rock and roll. So uh, hopefully this helped. If you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. Be glad to help you out. But yeah, not too bad of an install. Biggest pain in the ass is those little clips back there, but um, definitely not the end of the world, so. Okay, that wraps up the install for the Whirly Custom Fab three and a half inch intercooler pipe. Wasn't that bad, probably took me around an hour and a half, but that's with setting up, filming, showing you guys the tools and all that stuff. So all in all, really not a bad install. I'd say uh, if you're somewhat mechanically inclined, you can knock it out with no problem, so. Biggest pain in the butt for me was those little clips, but Whirly does supply you with a new clip so you can keep the other one with your factory piece. And uh, remember, keep your all your factory stuff. Don't throw away any of your parts. You might need it someday. So 
All right, guys, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.